are you academically talented, but you don't have money to study in one of the best countries in the world or in one of the best universities in the world? And you've been desiring to move abroad to study on a fully funded basis and all your attempts has proven to be abortive. The UBC MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program might just be what you've been looking for. It might just be the answer. Okay, so this is a fully funded scholarship in Canada. A lot of people love Canada, including myself. The University of British Columbia is pleased to partner with the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program to provide comprehensive scholarships to students from Sub-Saharan Africa. If you're not from Sub-Saharan Africa, I'm going to show you other opportunities, other scholarship opportunities, which you might be eligible to apply. Okay, the program provides access to education for academically talented yet economically marginalized young people. Scholars in the program have demonstrated commitment to giving back to their communities and develop the leadership needed to contribute to social and economic transformation across the continent. All right, I'm going to share more about this, but before I do that, if you haven't subscribed, kindly hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I drop content. I drop content every week. This is the Promise Breno channel and we are changing lives. Okay. I have lots of content already on my channel and this content are very, very beneficial and essential. Okay. So welcome if this is your first time, if you're seeing me for the first time. So, and don't forget to like this video in order to support it, okay? All right, thank you so much for doing that. All right, now let's look at who they are, okay? The MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program at the UBC will take place over a 10-year period with a total of 163 MasterCard Foundation Scholars, including 77 undergraduate and 35 master's students. Beginning with five undergraduate students in 2013, in 2018, UBC will have more than 70 MasterCard Foundation scholars, okay? Now, why should you apply to UBC, the University of British Columbia? Why UBC? The promised academic faculties and research facilities globally recognized for their influence and impact, the outcome, knowledge, skills, hands-on experience, and Connections for life. The Vancouver campus is arguably the most beautiful places on earth to pursue academic career. Most international university in North America, it is okay, the most international university in North America, global top 10, 40, I mean, global top 40 university. At University of British Columbia's Vancouver campus, you can get a top tier education while living in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. This research intensive campus is an incubator for bright ideas and a jumping off point for adventure, both inside and outside the classroom. Okay, now that we've looked at the preamble, let's delve further. Okay, so it is important to note that in this content, I'm gonna be sharing two kinds of scholarships. So. Uh, the first one that I'm going to be starting with is the graduate scholarship, which is like the master scholarship. And the other one is going to be the undergraduate scholarship. OK, so if you're looking for either master's or undergraduate scholarship, this is the right content for you. OK, now let's go to the graduate scholarship. So if you come to the graduate scholarship page or admission, OK, then we're going to look at certain things like the scholarship eligibility, important deadlines, steps to apply. It's so important that you look at these things or that we look at these things extensively so that we will get a picture to know if we qualify or not. Okay, very, very important. Okay, so that you don't end up wasting your time. Now let's look at scholarship eligibility. To be eligible for consideration for the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program or Scholars Master's Program at UBC, the applicant must have completed a bachelor's degree. That is the first thing. Must not already have a graduate or PhD. So basically, if you are applying for this scholarship and you are applying for master's scholarship, all right, then you must not have a master's degree already. 
So if you already have a master's degree, but you want to use this opportunity to move abroad, right? You want to make change. You want to be able to, you know, to make impact. You want to be able to study in one of the best universities in the world. You want, you want to be able to move to Canada to have a better life for yourself and your family. If I were you, I will remove the master's stuff on my CV. Scrap it off completely, okay? Don't put it in your CV. Just apply with your undergraduate degree. Do you understand my point here? Okay? Then you must be 35 years old or younger, okay, at the time of application. That is, you were born in 1998. I mean, you were born in 1988 or after, okay? Do you understand? Be a citizen or a refugee of a sub-Saharan African country. We're going to, I'm going to show you the list there, okay? I'm going to show you the list of the countries of the people who are eligible for this scholarship. Just like I've mentioned earlier, if you're not from a sub-Saharan African country, keep watching because I'm going to show you some other opportunities which you might be eligible to apply for, okay? So don't be in a hurry to go, okay? This content can help you as well. All right, now let's, let's look at the eligible countries in the sub-Saharan or the sub-Saharan countries which are eligible, eligible for this scholarship. So as you can see here, uh, you can see Angola, Benin Republic. Because of time, I'm not going to read out everything. Just take a glance, and if you see your country here, then you are eligible for this scholarship. I'm going to put the link in the description, so you can also check it out by yourself, you know, in order to find out if you're eligible or not. Nigeria is eligible, of course. Okay, Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, Mauritania, Mauritius, Cote d'Ivoire, etc. Okay, so this is one of the criteria that you need to fulfill in order to apply for this scholarship. Now, you must have lived a significant part of your life in a sub-Saharan African country. Okay, you must present economically disadvantaged financial circumstances. So you could do that with um, maybe bank statement or whatever thing that you can provide to prove that you are economically disadvantaged or that your family cannot sponsor you or that you are economically marginalized. Okay, then you must have achieved academic excellence under difficult circumstances. Okay, so I think this one you need to show it. In your letter of motivation, you know, a lot of people went through hell. Yes, people went through maybe near near hell experience or difficult experience. You know, that's what I mean. You know, trying to you know go to school. Some people even had to be going to school and be working at the same time. You know, some people don't don't, don't even have a sponsor. So if you just you just need to be yourself and show that this is what you've been through. Okay. All right, then you must show leadership qualities or potential. Okay, very, very important. This is an important or a very, very important criteria for selection. Okay, then you must demonstrate an interest in and commitment to giving back to your home country. Okay, there are people out there who really want to give back to their home country. You know, they want to give back but they've not had that opportunity, you know, in order that will place them in that pedestal where they'll be able to give back to their community. This is an opportunity for you and you don't want to miss this. You don't want to be sleeping on the bicycle, all right? You don't want to miss this opportunity. You must be a person who requires a Canadian study permit to study in Canada. So basically, if you're already um, a resident in Canada and you have a Canadian study permit, then I think you are not eligible. They want people who don't have Canadian visa, they don't have Canadian study permit, all right? So basically, you're from Africa or, you know, outside, you know, and you want to move, all right? And you don't have those things, those papers, okay? So you must not be a person who claimed or will claim asylum or protected person status after arriving in Canada. You must commit to returning to Africa in order to apply your training and skills to the betterment of others. So these things, I believe you should be able to show these things or to write these things in your motivation or statement of purpose, okay? Uh, it depends on which one that they're looking for, okay? Then you must be applying for a master's degree in one of the following faculties and programs at UBC's Vancouver campus, 
Okay, so the first uh, the first list of faculty, I mean, the first faculty is the faculty of forestry. Okay, and under that, we have masters of sustainable um, forest management, master of international forestry, master of geomatics for environmental management. Then uh, under the faculty of land and um, food systems, we have masters of food and resource economics. We have master of food sciences. We have master of land and water systems. Then under the faculty of science, we have master of data science. Okay, so you must be applying to any of these courses in order to be eligible for this scholarship. So um, if I were you, okay, in order to find out if I'm the right fit for any of them, I would go over and click on the links, okay, and investigate and check their requirement and see if it meets with my background or my vision. Okay, very, very important. Then uh, let's, let's, let's use this one as, as an example. For example, the uh, Master of Sustainable Forest Management. Okay, so you have to go there or anyone that you're interested in checking, okay, then you have to look at um, how, you know, why you choose this program and so on and so forth and see if you are eligible to apply, okay? Very, very important. Okay, so the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship Program only covers the expenses of the admitted scholars, meaning that if you get the scholarship, they're only going to cover your expenses, not other people like family members, it's only going to be you. But you know that when you go to Canada and you're fully funded basis, you know, at least if you can be able to get an, a job at the side, you should be able to, you know, bring your family, you know. You know I'm just giving you a tip as somebody who has lived abroad for, so many, or for, for many years or for several years. Do you understand? Okay. So Canadian citizens and permanent residents are not eligible to apply for this scholarship. Okay. Very, very, very important. And funds for the master's, for the MasterCard Scholars Program at UBC cannot be applied to pursue program at other academic uh, institutions. Okay, now that we've looked at the eligibility criteria, let's move to the important deadlines, okay? It's very important for you to take note of deadlines so that it will help you in your roadmap, okay? It will help you to structure your plan. Now, these dates may vary from those admitted, from those posted on faculty website. Please note that if you are applying for the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program at UBC, you must submit all your documents, including your reference letters, by the date requested below. Step one, access your eligibility. I mean, access your eligibility. Step two, MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program application deadline is the 1st of December 2023. Now, I want to believe that this is a recurring application. So if you're viewing this video after this deadline, okay, don't give up or don't feel like this is not for you. You can plan towards the next uh, intake if it is um, possible that they open it again next time, okay? So you can just have it at the back of your mind that there's a social -so scholarship at so -so time and you can start planning and you know, if once they are open or if they open, then you know, apply. Do you understand? Now, step three, the UPC faculty applications, okay? So for the forestry, okay, for the area of forestry, the deadline is January 11th, 2024. For the land and forest, I mean, for the land and food systems program, okay, the deadline is the 9th of January, 2024. Okay, then for science faculty or, the, or for the science um, program, the deadline is the 9th of January, 2024. Applicants applying for these scholarships, I mean, applicants applying for these programs should consider the different deadlines. Late submissions will not be accepted. Okay, very important. Now that we've looked at the deadlines, let's look at step by step on how to apply. Before we go into that, if you haven't, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, click the subscribe button right now. And don't forget to click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified whenever I drop content. As you can see, I am giving invaluable information, vital information, okay? I am devoting my time, giving you additional information for you to see. And I, I, I am not charging you for them, 
okay, and giving you this information based on my wealth of experience and my research and the informations I come across. So ensure you stay part of this family by subscribing and clicking on the bell. And don't forget to like this video by clicking on the thumbs up icon, okay, please just click on the like button. Thank you so much for your support. Now let's go to the step-by-step -step on how you can apply. Please note that faculty applications for MasterCard Foundation's um, scholarship applicant may differ from the rest. Okay, we've already talked about that one. I've already said that one already. Okay, so you click on this place. Now, it is important that you read through all the application steps outlined below. Remember that the link will be in the um, under this video in the description for you to go through them yourself. Okay, but I'm just gonna I'm just giving you a highlight or just using this to explain. Okay, okay, so that if, when you go through it again, it will be like you now you are confirming the things that I'm telling you now. Do you understand what I'm what I'm saying? Okay, very very important. Okay, and I want to put a disclaimer on this video that I am not an immigration expert, okay? I am not um, their agent. I am not an agent for this scholarship. I came across this opportunity. I saw it, okay? I looked at it. I took my time to go through it, and I saw that it is a good fit to put on my channel, and I know that it's going to help a lot of people to move abroad, okay? Hence, I am putting this here, and some of the things I'm telling you are just based on my opinion, okay? ensure that you make your proper research as well okay okay so i just wanted to clarify this before we move on okay so very very important so you reading reading this information very um like reading it extensively okay will help you to understand the entire application process answer any questions that may arise and help you to avoid any errors okay during application now step one okay, is that you need to access your eligibility. And we've already done that, right? We've I've already shown you the eligibility criteria, okay? So you can also go and check it out yourself, okay? Very, 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 very important, okay? Now, in doing that, you need to decide your programs of interest from the list, which I've shown you already, the list I've shown you already um, somewhere, Okay, I've shown you the list of the programs that are open. So decide any of this program if you're eligible for any of this program. Okay, decide if you're eligible for any of that program before you apply. Okay, or it's a part of the steps in deciding or in applying. Okay, very, 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 very important. Okay, then consult the list below to identify the minimum academic requirement or international credentials for graduate studies listed by a country to determine your academic eligibility for the program and the MasterCard Foundation scholarship. Now let's go to this place. So what they're trying to say is that, all right, for, um, I mean, your, uh, I mean, everybody can have an eligibility criteria based on where they studied. So, for example, if you're from Nigeria and you studied in, let's say, in Turkey, okay, they have, they are going to measure you for this application based on the requirements of Turkish universities, not Nigeria. Do you understand? So, this is very, very important. And you need to check where you studied. So, these are the countries that are listed here, okay? Please review the minimum requirement by country. They... Requirements are not based on your citizenship, but where you received your academic credentials that will most likely form the basis for admission to a UBC graduate program. Okay, now I'm going to use one as an example, and I'm going to use Nigeria. So I'm going to use that for those who studied in Nigeria, who got their degree from a Nigerian university. There are other countries here that you can check. But for this video, I'm just going to use Nigeria as an example. So let's click on Nigeria, okay? When we click on Nigeria, we see that um, now uh, note on eligibility, the higher national diploma, that is the HND, is not suitable as a basis of admission for a master degree at UBC, okay? If you have HND, you are not qualified. It means that you need to have a degree, bachelor's, a proper degree, okay? A proper degree from a Nigerian 
University. Now let's look at UBC Master Program uh, requirement for those who studied in Nigeria, who got their degree from a Nigerian university. So years of study required is at least four years of study. Overall grade required is that you should have second class, okay, upper division, or four on the scale five, okay? Now, uh, the credentials uh, the credentials or degree required is a bachelor's degree for UBC DG, I mean for UBC doctoral program requirement um uh, the overall grade required is second class upper division or four on a five point scale and the degree required is a master's degree now let's look at if you need English language proficiency you know so um, I, I think this will be applicable to everybody. Okay, regardless of whether you studied in Nigeria or not. Okay, what I'm going to be saying now, pay proper attention. Applicants from the university in Nigeria are usually not required to provide result of um result of an English language proficiency examination as part of their application. So this is just for Nigeria. I'm sorry. This is just for Nigerians, for those who studied in Nigeria. So they know that Nigerians official language is English. So they are not uh, requesting this from you at all, okay? If you studied in Nigerian University, you don't need to provide IELTS, you don't need to provide TOEFL or whatever English exam that they are asking for. You don't need to provide those things if you studied from a Nigerian University, if you graduated there, okay? But if you're not from, if you didn't study in Nigeria, let's say you studied in Turkey, for example, you know, Turkish uh, official, official language is not English, it is Turkish. So in that situation, you must have studied in English language. If your if the medium of instruction in the university you graduated from is English, then you don't need to provide English language proficiency exam like IELTS or any exam that they are looking for. Do you understand the point here? But please note that the, the graduate programs have the right to request a language test when deemed necessary, even if the language of instruction has been English, okay? Hope this is clear. Now let's look at financial awards. So the financial, this is a list of selected awards that you may be able to apply or be considered for if you meet the eligibility criteria. Please review the, the database for of financial awards for other award opportunities. So you see that apart from this MasterCard scholarship, there are even other scholarships for example, PhD, minimum funding, Venia scholarship, international. So those who, those who are not from uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, you can see that you can check these ones and you might be eligible. Okay, you see? So you can just check out this. And that's why I'm telling you that you should stay even if you're not in from a Sub-Saharan African country. Okay? Now that we've done this, uh, we've looked at this list. Okay? Uh, we've looked at this minimum academic requirements, blah, blah, blah. And I've shown you how you can find your own. So you just need to click on the country where you graduated from and it will bring out the list of the requirements for you. Okay. Now, uh, under this accessing your eligibility, the third one is that you, sh you should consult the program website to determine if you possess the appropriate background experience. Okay. So apart, apart from you now looking at the general eligibility for the country where you graduated from, you need to go to the programs, just like I used that Forest 3 one, okay, as an example, go and open that program and check, do you have, do you possess the appropriate background necessary for them to admit you in that program? Okay, you need to look at it too. That is why you don't, you don't just need to apply to any program, okay? Even if you have a small background or, you know, something like that, you know, what I would advise in that situation is that, you should show, you should kind of be passionate in your uh, motive, in your letter of motivation, okay? Show that you are really passionate about this, okay? So I believe that with small, um, with small uh, kind of um, uh, background and with a lot of passion, they might consider you, okay? They might consider you. Now, step two, additional tests. If your bachelor's degree was not taught in English, make arrangement to take an English proficiency exam, okay, either TOEFL or IELTS, and have the results sent to UBC. Please visit the website to confirm whether you meet the UBC English requirements, 
Okay, so um, here there are they talked about it here. Okay, and here are the acceptable tests. If you don't meet that criteria, if your medium of instruction in your previous school was not in English, you need to just come and check them out, and you will see the minimum the scores that they're looking for, and you know, and do what is required. Okay, very very important. Okay, now that we've looked at these things, now that we've looked at uh this one okay we go to uh step three mastercard foundation scholars program application package how is the application package look like so you must complete the mastercard foundation scholars program application before you apply to ubc um apologies if i am taking much of your time i just have to go through these things detailed so that i can break down these things so that you will be able to have the clearer picture so that when, when you go back to look at it, it will be easier for you, all right, to comprehend and know what is needed. Okay, very important. Okay, so you must complete the application. I mean, you must complete the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program application before you apply to UBC. So you must apply to the scholarship first before you apply to the University of British Columbia. I hope this is understood. And I'm going to show you how to apply, okay? In this particular uh, step, okay, I believe, um yes i'm going to start telling you the things that you need you know and blah 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 okay very 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 important so the mastercard foundation scholars scholars program application are due on december 1st 2023 we ask all applications to be submitted electronically in a single pdf document okay of course you can check that uh the other inst those institutions have deadlines and stuff I've talked about deadlines, okay? I'm not going to go into them again, okay? So it is required that you submit everything in one single PDF. So those, the, those things I'm going to be mentioning, get them in one PDF. If you don't know how to do that, it is very easy. Go on Google and just type merge PDF in one file. Then you see free website where you can do that. So you just need to go to, on that free website and upload the first PDF uh, document that you want to upload and, you know, and attach everything together, then you download it, all right? And it will be in one PDF. Make sure you follow the instructions. And if your document is not in PDF, you can also change it to PDF by, by doing so, by, I mean, by going on Google and just type change from JPEG or whatever to PDF, and you see free websites where you can do these things by yourself, okay? Then you have to send them via email as this is the faster and cost and it costs less. Late or incomplete packages cannot be accepted, and UBC is not responsible for any packages not received by the deadline. In, in, order, to, in order for the selection committee to, to determine your eligibility for this scholarship, you must demonstrate financial need, a commitment to give back, and how your education and, and how your education will contribute towards the transformation of your community, your region, or your country in Africa. Okay, so if I were you, I'll put these things at the back of my mind when writing my motivational letter or what is required of you, because you showing these things will really play a big role in you getting this scholarship. Okay, you have to show these things clearly that this is what you know. You have to show this is be honest as possible. Okay, that is why I am encouraging I am encouraging those who already this is what they are looking for to apply and to do what I'm asking you to do. Okay, this are these are the people I'm really encouraging to apply. Okay, then um, you have to now let's look at the first category. So you have to complete the Mastercard Foundation Scholarship Program application form. Okay, then if submitting a handwritten form, ensure that the document is clearly legible okay then to submit the personal statement so it is in this personal statement that i'm telling you to show those things show show that you know you are passionate about change you know so um, that's why i'm encouraging those who really want it who that is their passion that is their vision okay to apply for this scholarship okay so an answer to each question not exceeding the word limit must be typed and submitted okay so essay format is not accessible. So basically, there's a template that you're going to use, 
And in every, in this template, they have word limits where you're going to be answering questions, certain questions about, about your, you know, and that will form your personal statement. Okay. Now, third, submit a CV or resume. This should include all. I mean, this should this should include any relevant education and work experience. So when they say relevant, they mean any relevant work experience, any any relevant experience or work experience that is relevant to the program you are applying for. These are the things they will really, really look at. So if you are doing your CV, okay, these are the things, these are the experiences that should be on the top. All right, start with those experiences so that they will see them first before you now put other small, small experiences or the ones you had in other sectors or other background. Do you understand? And if you want to do your CV and you don't know how to create a CV, I have a video. It's, I have a video for you. or I have videos on my channel to help you do that. Okay, just go on my channel and check it out. And you will see, I thought, I, 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 I explained and I showed how to create TV, I mean, how to create CV in two ways. I mean, using two websites, okay? So the first one is Europa CV, which is a European standard professional CV. And the other one is how to create a CV on Canva. Okay, if you haven't seen that video, check it after watching this video. But in case you want me to kind of create it for you, you want a, you want our professional touch on your CV, you want us to create a CV for you, all right? Then just check the link under the, this, this under the description on, on, on this video. Just go under this video. you see a link, okay, that talks about that. Click on that link, do the needful, and contact me via end of my social media handle, which I would I would I would um, prefer you contact me on what on I mean on Instagram, okay. Then we are going to create a CV for you, okay. All right. Now provide two reference letters, okay. Please provide two reference letters on official letterhead. So, which means that, uh, what they mean is that, let's say you are providing a letter from um, your previous employer. Let's say your previous employer is, um, let's say Coca-Cola, for example. So, it has to be on official letterhead. They have to see the logo or whatever thing that makes that letter look official, okay? has to be in that letter so that you know to show them that this is official you know it will prove that it is official as well so very very important okay and it it has to at least okay it has to speak extensively on your community service volunteering abilities and leadership potential okay so you can even get a letter from your pastor yes if you have been a leader in the church you know you can also get a, a letter from your pastor you know, if your references would like to send their letters directly to them for privacy reasons, please note that this should be sent to them via email. And it has to be by the deadline or before this December uh, 1st, 2023. Okay. If I were you, I would, I would send it before the deadline or ask them to send it before the deadline. So basically, your referees can give you the letter. They can just give you the letter um, directly. Like they can write it and give it to you, and you attach it to that one one page PDF that you are sending to them. Okay. Or if they prefer to do it privately, you can just give them the email address of uh, which I'm going to show you the email address later. Then they can send it directly to them. But it has to be by this date or before this date. I will encourage you to let them do it before this date so that there won't be delays. Okay. Very, very important. Okay, very, very important. Anything that is sent, um, you know, before this time will be considered incomplete. Your application will be deemed incomplete and you will not get, you will not be considered for this scholarship. Okay, very, very important. The same letter, I mean, um, just have to go through these things yourself, okay, because of time. Okay, just go through them yourself. Now, let's go to the next one, transcripts. Please attach a legible copy of your unofficial transcript. If your official transcript is still fine, okay? If your transcripts are in a language other than English, then it has to be translated. Then um, six is that submit the checklist, application form, personal statement, CV, two reference letters on official letterhead, transcript, and signed declaration. So these are the checklists. 
Okay, this is just a review of what we've talked about, including this signed declaration. Okay, now upon completion of your application package, please submit a copy of your package as one PDF document via email to this email address. Okay, note that the declaration must be signed by hand, electronically or typed otherwise, the package will not. I mean, the package will be considered incomplete. So you must do it by hand, not uh, that, uh, not electronic, okay? Because I know that there are websites where you can just go and upload your document and sign it there. No, you must print out the document and sign it with your pen, okay? Okay, do you understand? Now, the seventh one, please tell us your story. What is of importance to you and reflects to who you are? It should be between 200 to 300 words maximum. Okay, this is self-explanatory. Then, describe a recent meaningful involvement in your community, including what your role is or has been in the activities, okay, or activity. It should be between 200 to 300 words maximum, okay? Why are you interested in studying at UBC? And how do you envision your chosen program of study at UBC helping you to reach your long-term career and personal goals? What drives you to achieve your goals? It should be between 200 to 300 words maximum, okay? Then persistence is crucial to the completion of this application. Please describe a situation where you had to overcome a significant obstacle or challenges or challenge to reach a goal? How did you react to this challenge and what did you learn from the situation? 200 to 300 maximum words. What else should we know about your financial condition in order to consider you for this scholarship? 200 to 300 maximum. Okay, so they have even given you guidelines on what you should showcase in your personal statements. Okay, they've given you guideline on what you should show in your personal statement or, you know, so this is a guideline of what you should show or, you know, what you should let them know, okay, in your personal statement or your motivation, okay? Now, step four, UPC faculty applications, okay? So once you, you've applied, once you've applied for your Master Foundation Scholarship, You've done that, you've done what I've talked about in the previous step, okay? Then you will receive an email with instructions to submit an online application to UBC. That is if you are eligible. If they've looked at your application and they see that, oh, you're eligible, you know? I think that would even go a long way to even show you that, oh, you you can stand a chance. You have a higher chance. You have, you have, you have a high chance of getting this scholarship or you've already, you can get it as long as you get the admission. So this will even give you a picture of, of that, okay? Then you will receive an instruction uh, by email, okay? On, okay, and, you know, of course, link on, on, on what to do in order to submit an online application to UBC. So you have to review the instructions for the faculty applications. So do, the, do that yourself. Then regarding application fees, you may be eligible for a fee waiver if your citizenship and correspondence address is located in one of the world's 50 least developed countries okay i'm going to show you that in a moment according to the united nations okay this is according to the united nations please visit this website to check which countries are you on the list so basically this application fee but then you can be exempted if you are from one of these one of these countries here okay let me make it bigger you can be exempted if you're from one of these countries here Okay, if you're from one of these countries here, okay, you can be exempted from paying uh, the application fees. Okay, or you get or you get a waiver. So probably you might have to pay for it. Then later they will refund you back or something like that. Okay, so if your country is not listed, please request a fee waiver when you are submitting your your, your Mastercard Foundation or Scholars Program package. So basically, even if your country is not on the list. You can also request a fee waiver. Okay, you can also request a fee waiver. Do you understand what I mean? You can also request a fee waiver. 
right? Like it's so the, the way they made it, they made it in such a way that even the 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 poorest person, right, can apply for this scholarship, you know, or can apply for this program to study at this university. Okay, so if you are invited to move to the faculty application step, we will provide or they will provide instructions on how to use a fee waiver during the application, the program application process. If you submit your application without applying your fee waiver, you are unable to provide, they will unable to provide you a refund, which means that you are going to pay application fee, but then you can be refunded by this application fee. Or you may be, or do you understand what I mean? Now, step five. Uh, after you've applied, then reviewing the process. In February 2024, faculties will nominate candidates okay, for, uh, for admission for the MasterCard Foundation scholarship. A university-wide selection committee will review scholarship applications from the three faculties, rank them, and select award, uh, award recipient. Shortlisted candidates will be contacted at this time and invited to submit a video interview. Then in April 2024, only the MasterCard Foundation Scholar Award recipients will be contacted. And soon, uh, and soon thereafter, an announcement of award recipients will be made. So only those who are awarded will be contacted on, on you know in this uh, in this time, in this period of time. Okay, meaning that if uh, those who didn't uh, get the scholarship, uh, they might not contact you. Or they will not contact you. Okay. Unfortunately, unfortunately, due to the high volume of applications they receive, they are unable to respond to applicants who have not received the scholarship, which means that they, they will not contact you if you don't receive it. Okay. Now that you have read the entire application process, or now that we have shown you the entire application process and determined you are eligible to apply, you can download the MasterCard. Foundation Scholars Program application here. Okay, so you just need to come here and download it. Okay, download it. So you can see that it's downloaded in, in um, it's going to be in Word, in, in Microsoft Word, which means that after you finish that, you can change it to PDF. And how do you do that? Easy. So you need to come on Google, right? Come, come on your Google and just type uh, Word, to pdf online free once you do that you will see like this one i love pdf you can do that here or you can do that here so there are different websites where you can do that by yourself okay all right so let me let me know your thoughts put in the comment section below remember i've not done about undergraduate i'm going to show you that one but i'm going to be very fast in that one okay so 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 if i'm not able to go and explain it in detail, please pardon me, all right? Um, I don't want to make this video very, very long, okay? That's why I'm just going to just summarize, okay, the rest of the things, okay? All right, do you understand? Then um, let's see. Now, for further questions about the UBS MasterCard Foundation Scholarship, please visit, I mean, please email, this, email them, okay, email them. Now, to apply to UBC, Please note that the faculty applications for MasterCard Foundation Scholarship applicants may be different than what is posted on the faculty website. Okay, be sure to review deadlines as noted in the important deadline section above. Okay, now that we've talked about uh, we've talked about the uh, graduate that is the master's scholarship, let's look at the undergraduates. Okay, so let's click on this one. When we click on this one, it's going to take us to where we're going to find information regarding that. Okay, so undergraduate admissions. The UBC MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program has completed its undergraduate recruitment and will no longer be accepting new, uh, new scholarship applications. So uh, provided that this is a recording application, you should plan towards next year, which means that if you're an undergraduate and you want to apply for this scholarship next year, so you should go and visit their website before this time, earlier, just be monitoring it from January, February to know if it's going to be open or not. Okay, so that if it's open, you can apply. Okay, but don't go, don't go anywhere because I have suggestion for you. There are other scholarships that you can apply to, and I'm going to be showing them to you. Okay, even those of you, those people who are not from um, Sub-Saharan Africa, you can also find these scholarships relevant. They might be you might be eligible to apply to them or you might be eligible to apply for them. 
Now, for further, I mean, for other international undergraduate scholarship information at UBC, please visit this one. So let's go on this page, okay? Let's go on this page. You can also learn more about other partner institutions offering the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program here. So we can also learn about other institutions offering it. But anyway, this page was not found. But what I want to say about this is that apart from this UBC University, apart from the University of British Columbia, Mac, uh, McGill University are also offering this MasterCard Foundation Scholarship. So you just need to come here. McGill is M-C-G-I-L-L -L University in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. They are also offering. So you just need to go on their website and check the information about this scholarship and apply. So uh, basically, you can also you can apply. I think you can apply for two, for both this university and McGill University, so that you can increase your chance of getting it. Okay. Now let's let's look at some undergraduate. Uh, programs and, and admissions, I mean the scholarships awards for international students for undergraduates. Okay, let's look at them briefly before I end this video. Okay, so uh, just a moment. Okay, so the first one, there are two of them here. The first one is entrance, I mean international major entrance scholarship. Then uh, you just need to read the uh, eligibility criteria here and apply. If you want, if you apply to UBC by January 15, you'll be automatically considered for, for IMES. You'll be automatically considered for this scholarship if you apply to UBC by 15th, that is by this deadline or before this deadline. So basically you don't need to even apply for the scholarship separately, just apply for the admission and you'll be considered for this scholarship, okay? So I'll put the link in the description so that you just read it by yourself, okay? I'm sorry that I cannot go through this one's detail the way I did for masters. Okay, uh, now for this one, Outstanding International Student Award, also read the criteria here, okay, and apply to UBC by 15th, uh, by, by January 15th, okay. How to apply is that if you apply to UBC by January 15th, you'll be automatically, it's just like the same, the same, the same thing like the other one. So this one's, you don't need to apply for the scholarship separately, just apply to the university and you'll be automatically considered for this scholarship okay very very important okay very very important yeah so that would be it about this content all right uh what i wanted to show you is that if you want to apply for this for this for example if you want to apply uh for you if you want to apply to ubc you have to come here and click here okay if you want to apply to ubc come and click on this apply to ubc and it will take you to um apply to ubc at education Planner BC, okay. So um, to apply to UBC and most other BC post-secondary institutions, you will use the Education Planner BC website. Sign up for an Education Planner BC account to get started, or log into your existing account if you already have one. Okay, just follow the instruction and apply. This is how you can apply to UBC. Okay, let me know your let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Okay, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And don't forget to put your uh, questions in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Okay, if you haven't done so, please subscribe and click on the bell so that you'll be notified whenever I drop content. And please and please like this video to support it. And if you want a one on one conversation with me, you want to talk to me one on one, for example, you want me to tailor my advice. Um, like to your needs, to your, to your own needs, not just as general information, then you need to come here and click on this talk to talk to me one on one and do the needful. After you've done the needful, contact me via any of my social media handle. Okay, my social media handles are below here. Okay, I would I would, I would prefer that you contact me via Instagram because uh, it will be easier for me to reply you faster. Okay, so or you can also contact me on Facebook. Then just contact me with a screenshot. Then we will plan a time and date for the one-on-one -on -one conversation. Then if you want us to design a professional CV for you, also do the same. Follow the same process. And if you want us to handle your university admission abroad, okay, also do the same. But then before you click on this link, okay, if you want us to handle your university admission abroad, you can contact us, okay. 
you can contact us via um the social media handle there as i've explained instagram uh email or facebook okay then uh we're going to uh discuss about it then if you're okay then we go on with your application okay because for now i'm only uh we're only doing for poland okay we're only doing admission for poland but in the future uh i am considering going to application for slovakia for lithuania for estonia for portugal croatia you know and even i think latvia in the future that's what i'm planning so um in order to learn our the latest updates contact me first before you go and pay for the service here okay very important or you can also review this and check the service fee and you know before contacting us okay all right guys thank you for watching till this time i really appreciate you for watching till this time till i come away again have a great time see you in my next video